For thousands of years, First Nations peoples have walked on this land. As we gather, we acknowledge that we stand on the traditional territory of the Kalaman Nation. We live with respect, peace, and friendship on this land. Welcome and Happy Easter. What a beautiful morning that we've woken up to. It's absolutely gorgeous and we've had a few couple, a few days of uh, nice sunshiny weather. I'm going to begin with a call to worship. In the beginning, when it was very dark, God said, let there be light. In the beginning, when it was very quiet, the Word was with God. When the time was right, God sent the Son. And it was all very good. If you continue in life as though there were no resurrection, come here. If you open your eyes but do not recognize the Holy One, come here. If your life is filled with mourning, come here. Come here, children of the living Creator. Come see the risen Christ. Let us worship together. We're going to listen to or sing along, if you wish, uh, a song from More Voices, number 161. It's called, I Have Called You By Your Name. And it's performed by the gathered singers at Royal Heights United Church in Delta, British Columbia. Let us listen. Good day. 
This is our reading from the present. An excerpt from Returning to the Healing Oasis. Sharon Moon writes, Exile is a place where one way of being has ended and another has not yet begun. Exile is between time, between the time when we knew the questions and some of the answers, and the time when we are forced to ask new questions that we have not yet been able to formulate. Exile happens as paradigms shift, and we do not feel at home in the radically rearranging world. But exile is also profoundly personal. When we are given a diagnosis of terminal illness, we are thrown into exile. When our partner leaves us, we are thrown into exile. When the job we thought would always give us security is suddenly wrenched from us, we are thrown into exile. Some exiles we choose. We enter them because we know we need to radically reorientate our lives. Other exiles are forced upon us, and we are dragged into them kicking and screaming. Either way, exile is a time of grieving for what has been lost, of living with uncertain transition, of figuring out who we are in this new reality into which we have been thrust. Eventually, exile is also about allowing the new thing God is to emerge even when it is not very clear at this time. And today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Mary Magdalene was the first one to notice something strange. She had gone to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and she noticed that the stone had been moved away. Then she ran to tell Simon Peter and another disciple, and they ran at once to the tomb to see for themselves. The other disciple got there first and bent over to look into the tomb. He saw the cloths lying there, but nothing else. Simon Peter went in to make sure that the body was really missing. He found the cloth that Jesus' body had been wrapped in and saw the cloth that had covered his head, but nothing else. So they went back home. But Mary Magdalene stayed at the tomb, weeping. When she bent down to look in, she saw not linen wrappings or head cloths, but two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been lying. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? Mary Magdalene answered, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she turned around, she saw another man standing there, who also asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing that he was the gardener, she answered, Sir, if you have carried Jesus away, tell me where he is, and I will take him with me. At this point, the man spoke again in a voice that Mary Magdalene knew and loved more than anything. Mary, he said. She turned and said, Rabbi, teacher. Jesus said, Don't hold on to me here. Instead, go to the others and tell them that I am going back to your God and my God. Mary Magdalene did as Jesus said. She went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them everything he had told her early in the morning when she had heard a gardener call her by name. The word as we understand it today. Thank you, Grant. The message today is called Resurrection in the Gardener. God, let us pray. God of grace, open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to let our vision change our lives. Amen. Given the season of spring, it seems appropriate that Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. She believes him to be a gardener, someone who cares for the seeds in the ground, new growth, and cultivating creation in the gardens. I love this time of year, even in the midst of COVID-19, physical distancing and isolation, spring is a time for resurrection. New birth and regrowth, resurrection is all around us. But resurrection happens in many ways, ways in which we can easily overlook. Every time we go through life stages, we are being restored to life from childhood to adolescence, to young adulthood to adulthood and beyond are all resurrections. These stages create for us greater freedoms and more life experiences. 
And even today, we are seeing the gardener in all those doctors and nurses who put on masks and protective gear to care for those in hospitals. The truck drivers delivering food to grocery stores, the clerks stocking shelves, the janitors, pharmacists ensuring we get our medic medications, the garbage collectors, and those of us who are protecting others by remaining physically distant are all gardeners. All are essential for us to sustain our life. Even without deserved pay increases, they put their own health at risk. And yes, this is resurrection time. Changes are beyond our control, but we trust and have faith. And when this pandemic is over, we will be in a better place. Hopefully, we will have looked deep within and discerned what is most important to us. We will have left all the petty disagreements behind and be given the grace of acceptance and a deeper love for each other. To be open, to be open to and have an appreciation for our differences and ready to listen with an open heart to recognize that we each in our own way have something to offer. This is a time of quiet when we are able to see the other as valuable and sacred. And for those concerned about school closures, well, our friend John Taves sent this to me the other day. And it's quite extensive and long, but we need to listen. He says, just a thought. If they cancel the rest of the school year, students would miss three plus months of education. Many people are concerned about students falling behind because of this. Yes, they may fall behind when it comes to classroom education, but what if? What if instead of falling behind, this group of kids are advanced because of this? Now hear me out. What if they have more empathy? They enjoy family connection. They can be more creative and entertain themselves. They love to read. They love to express themselves in writing. What if they enjoy the simple things like their own backyard and sitting near a window in the quiet? What if they notice the birds and the dates, the different flowers emerge and the calming renewal of a gentle rain shower? What if this generation are the ones to learn to cook, organize their space, do their laundry and keep a well-run home? What if they learn to use an actual phone by calling and speaking to grandparents, family and friends? What if they learn to stretch a dollar and to live with less? What if they learn to plan shopping trips and meals at home? What if they learn the value of eating together as a family and finding the good to share in the small delights of the everyday? What if they are the ones to place great value on our teachers and educational professionals, librarians, public servants, and the previously invisible essential support workers like truck drivers, grocers, cashiers, custodians, logistics, and healthcare workers, and their supporting staff, just to name a few of the millions taking care of us right now while we are sheltered in place? What if they learn the value of connecting physically and not always electronically with the other people? What if among these children, a great leader emerges who had the benefit of a slower pace and a simpler life to truly learn what really matters in this life? What if they, instead of being behind, are ahead. Well, thank you for these thought-provoking words, John, and they're quite appropriate for today. And my thought after reading this was, what if we are all ahead? What if we are all able to accept changes more rapidly, because this was very quick for us, than before? 
what if we are able to be open up to try new things, different ways of doing worship, for example. This week, look for the joy of resurrection that's all around you. Let us hear another song. From More Voices, number 194, Bread of Life, Feed My Soul. And this is sung by St. Paul's United Church Choir from Riverview, New Brunswick. And Brenda Barnes is their director. Let us listen. Now let us begin the great thanksgiving. This communi communion liturgy is actually from General Council 43 recall gathering. And the liturgy is rewritten um, from a, a communion prayer by moderator Richard Bott and Reverend Mitchell Anderson. Let us begin. My friends in Christ, we are gathered at this table, a table that touches all places and all times. Let us join together in a statement of our shared faith. Repeat after me. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I hope that you've had a chance to bring a little bit of bread and bring a little bit of juice or wine to Christ's table. If you haven't, please know that you are still a part of Christ's communion, whether or not you're able to have the physical elements present. If you have bread with you, I would invite you to take the bread in your hands and take a moment. Think about where the ingredients has come from. 
Who has formed it and baked it and brought it to you? The bread that I have in front of me is bread I made. It has a smell of being at home as a child in my mother's kitchen. And it, it is as much of a meal of remembrance as it is bread of life. God is with us, is with all creation. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the one of all creation. It is right and we give thanks to the most holy. It is right that all of creation celebrates who you are in our lives. From the very beginning of the very beginning, before there was a beginning at all, you were there. Out of your love, all things came into being. Hallelujah. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the creatures that crawl across the land and walk upon it, the creatures that squiggle underneath it, and us people, all things, all creatures, created by you from the tiniest of quirks to the grandest of universal structures, loving one, we who are your people. We gather together to celebrate your presence, not just here, but at Christ's table, a table that we understand is open to all of creation. We recognize that there are times that we have not lived in a way that your love calls us to. We, we recognize that there is brokenness in creation and inside ourselves. We recognize that sometimes we forget who we are and we forget who you are and we forget the relationship that we share. But over and over, you call us back. You call us back to the table you call us back to relationship. You call us back to your love through prophets and priests, through grandmothers and grandfathers, through children and, eld and elders. You call us back over and over again, and we give you thanks. When the time was right, you sent Jesus to be part of this creation, to be one of us, to be born into this world, a tiny baby, a child, a youth and an adult. He laughed with those who laughed. He cried with those who cried. In his living, in his loving, he was truly with all your creation. On the night before Jesus was taken to what would be his death, he gathered with his friends around the table, like we gather around this table. He did what he had done so many times before. He told the stories of faith and love, and he celebrated who you are. In one part of the meal, he took a loaf of bread and gave thanks to you, like we give thanks to you. Blessed are you, God most holy, who brings grain from the earth. Then he took the bread and he broke it. He gave it to his friends saying, take this, all of you and eat it. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat bread, remember me, remember me. When the meal was almost over, he took wine. like we take juice or wine and poured it into a cup. Again, he gave thanks to you, loving God, like we give thanks to you. Blessed are you, God most holy, who brings fruit from the earth. Then he gave the cup to his friends saying, take this all of you and drink. 
This is my promise in my life's blood that makes mistakes are all forgiven. Each time you drink, remember me. So we are at his table, and because we are at this table, we eat and we drink and we remember. Join with, with me in the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples, sharing in the words of your heart. For God is like our mother and is like our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Take, eat, drink, and remember. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time together in worship and praise, celebrating what we've tasted at this table of the hope and joy you promised for all creation. Remember those who know, who we know who are precious to us, family members and friends close and far away. We remember those who are grieving and hurting today. We asked for your healing and blessing that might be in all of the hurting and broken parts of our world. But as we prepare ourselves to the task you have set before us as a people of Powell River United Church, that we might carry with us the promise that we have tasted the promise of renewal and freedom in the bread and the cup. May we be a renewed people, set forth for a renewed church, doing what we can to take up your work in this time and place. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we have the blessing, I just want to uh, remind you that, that giving and your sharing is very much is very much a part of, of a worship service. So we ask that you present an offering as you are able. Go now aware of the presence of new life continually around you. Go out living in the promise of the one who will not abandon us, but whose love endures forever. Until we gather again, go in peace. And let us listen or sing along to More Voices number 215, Peace Be With You. Let us listen.
Our service has ended. Go in the peace of Christ, now and forevermore. Amen.